And look at somebody say, I am, totally I am totally healthy. What God is saying to you today that your health is your wealth. Your health is your greatest wealth that you have in life. And we're not talking like the world talks about just having physical health. Oh, my body. The doctors say I don't have any diseases in my body, so I am healthy. Uh, uh, and we're not just talking about mental health. And you need to praise God every day for being clothed in your right mind. Somebody thank God because there are people with millions. There are people with billions of dollars that are not clothed in their right mind. That's the only of the Denver Broncos with our timers. He can't even handle the team. If you could ask the, the, one of the great designers, Kate Spade, who committed suicide this week, Anthony Bedone, everybody was talking about what a great person he was. If you're so great, praise God, why do you want to kill yourself? Amen. It's because of mental health. And every day that you wake up, clothed in your right mind. And that's why God is saying you can't be conformed to this world. Right. You got to be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. You got to get that bad memory out of your head. Them childhood memories where people done told you this and told you that and call you this and call you that. You got to take out all of those imaginations. The Bible says you cast down those imaginations. Anything that exalts itself above the word of God. Get out of here. No more will I believe what anybody said about me, including myself. The only report is what God says. And God says that I'm a new creation. The former things are passed away. God said I am a child of God. God says that I am a joint heir with Christ. God says, I am more than a conqueror. So anytime he leads me to it, he will see me through it. God says to you, praise God, to get your memory right. Because he came that you would prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. And we're seeing so many people today that's struggling in the memory. They're struggling in their imagination. Who, did, who cast down imaginations this week, praise God? We had a testimony this morning about someone who used to be riddled in jealousy, worried about her husband not, where is he going? Or when is he coming back? Or what are we doing? Do we roll like that, y'all? No. We don't roll like that. We ain't got time to be worried about what nobody else is doing. That's the devil's territory. The Bible calls it leaning to your own understanding. But the solution, he says, in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge the Lord, and he will guide your paths and your ways. So we use the I am presence, praise God, for our imagination. We use it to work for us and not against us. We visualize who God says we are, and then we walk accordingly. When the young man didn't know who his father was and the pastor asked him, whose child are you? And the pastor said, I know the resemblance is unmistakable. Why, you're God's child. Right. Bert Hooper said that was the day he became the governor of Tennessee. And God is saying, when are you going to behold who you are in Christ? When are you going to get your imagination working for you instead of against you? The man said, as he got older, I've had many troubles in my life. And he had an old frown on his face when he said it. He said, most of those have never happened. Now, how many of us know most of what you worry about don't never happen? Now, if you read my book, Where Do You Stand? You know that 97% of the things that you worry about, according to the latest research, don't even happen to you, praise God. Or you can't do nothing about them. So why worry about something that's probably ain't going to happen, and especially something you can't do nothing about? Amen. That's why we do the serenity prayer. To, somebody say the peace of mind prayer. Of mind. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change. Can you change the weather? No. Well, why worry about the weather? <laughs> Just get you an umbrella <laughs> and learn how to enjoy the rain. But give me the courage to change the things that I can. 
If we would kick the person that's causing us the most of our problem, somebody say it's our own behind. Right. <laughs> that we'd have to start with. So change the things you can and have the wisdom to know the difference. You've got the power with Christ to transform your situation. God has given you everything in his word. Every I am promise from God. The promises of God, the Bible says, are yes and amen. You don't have to go around saying, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Somebody say it's already settled. When God said it, he's not a man that can lie. And he never fails. But he can't be complete without your faith. And that's what God is looking for somebody to really believe what he says in his word. Yes. And when you behold it, the Bible says all things become new. Do I have anybody with a new walk? Yes. The Bible says I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what the word says. Anybody got a new talk? Oh, yeah. I speak the word, not my circumstances. I call things that are not as though they are until they are. I'm not looking at what I see or what some doctors say. I'm only looking at what God says in his word. Thank God for good doctors. They are a blessing in our life. But can somebody give God praise for our healer? Jehovah Rapha. He's never lost a case. And when people say, ain't nothing we can do, it's a beautiful day in God's sight because when we can't see the way, we get out of the way. We let him have his way. Has he ever made a way out of no way? Somebody say, he's just good like that. But you got to do like him and see the end from the beginning. You got to visualize yourself being who God said you are. You got to visualize yourself having what God said you would have. And when you see it, you'll believe it. And when you believe it, you'll see it. He says that in the word. So get your imagination working for you. God has taught us the end in mind is to get your nervous system under God's control. Do I have anybody that's made up your mind to pray about everything and worry about nothing. I will not spend an iota of time in my life worrying about nothing in this world. That's one of the blessings of living in God's presence. Not only do you have the fullness of joy, but wherever he guides, somebody say he provides. There's no recession in heaven. His job as a patter yes. is to protect you, yes. Yes. to provide for you, yes. and to be a priest for you. Yes. And I don't care how many guns you get, can't nobody protect you like the Lord. Yes. You know, we're having an epidemic in our country today with suicide. And the latest research tells us that there are more people committing suicide than homicide. And I want you to pray for our Anglo brothers because leading the parade at over 75 percent are our dear brothers. And some of my best friends, are, are, are they got so much emphasis on guns, guns, guns. And I'm trying to say, man, a gun goes together. Faith and fear goes together like water and oil. Now, because of the Second Amendment, you've got a right to bear arms. And anybody in here, don't be ashamed of your right to bear arms. But it's not for your protection. Can't nobody protect you like God. Amen. You put your trust in him. And quit imagining what other folks are trying to do to you. Folks are so busy trying to take care of their own life. They ain't got no time trying to get vengeance on you for stuff that happened in the past. People that are enlightened know that vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Anything that needs to be repaid, we let God do it. It's not our job to do an eye for an eye. That leaves everybody blind. A tooth for a tooth and everybody's wearing false teeth. But we let go and we let God. 
But if you don't get your nervous system under control, and the way you get your nervous system under control, praise God, Paul said in Philippians 4, 8, to think on these things. Anybody this week thought about those things? Whatever is true, God's word is true. Whatever is honest, just, lovely, good report, virtuous and praiseworthy. Because what you think about, you bring about. Don't have no energy spent thinking about what I don't want. That's why all through the day, all through the week, I know I've used the word I am at least 10,000 times. Because my mind is constantly saying I am. I am who God says I am. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am a new creation. I am more than a conqueror. I am blessed and highly favored. And you got to speak it into your own life. And when you're speaking it into your own life, praise God, when you believe it, you will see it. Anybody said this week, I am a money magnet? I hope you did. I ain't talking about I love money. No, no, the love of money is the root of all either. But somebody say money love me. <laughs> and it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to walk around and see a dime on the ground and say, praise God, I am a money magnet. <laughs> ah! And when you get the feelings of it, it manifests in your life. I love how the word works when you work it, y'all. Oh, yeah. But you got to do your part. If you're going through any type of of illness in your life. What is your affirmation that you say, I am healed by Jesus Christ? Did anybody say it? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. It's got to run through your mind over and over and over and over again like a tape. And when you do that, praise God, you begin to see the manifestations in your life. Jesus healed 10 lepers one day. And the beautiful thing about that, when Jesus saw them, they said, Jesus, have mercy on us. And Jesus just gave them an instruction. He says, go and show yourself to the priest. Oh, yeah. And you know, if they were walking by sight, they've still been looking at their body. They got the sores on them from leprosy. And with leprosy, you weren't supposed to be around nobody. And, and you could get into trouble by going to show yourself to somebody. But the Bible says, as they went they were healed. So what was their part to do? They had to step out on faith. And as they walked in faith, the souls were gone. But some people would have still been waiting. I ain't going to show myself to no priest because I still got sores on my body. But the word says we walk by faith and not by sight. So not only do you get your memory under God's control, you get your imagination under God's control. Praise God. You get your nervous decision, uh, system under God's control. And then you get your decision making under God's control. And when we trust him with all of our heart and we stop leaning to our own understanding, the next part of that says, in all your ways do what? Acknowledge, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. We acknowledge God before we make the decisions. We say, what do you say about this before I do it? Instead of going to do it and then say, God, get me out of this. God wants to be all in your life, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, in your family, in your career, in your relationships. And your part is to speak the word according to the promises that he has made. Spirit to y'all, do I have anybody that love him with all your heart? Oh, yeah. 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 And when you love him with all your heart, it's not hard to obey him. Yes. It's not hard to put no other God, that means no other person, place a thing before him. Yes. It's not hard to want to live in his presence in the fullness of joy because you know you don't pay the price for doing it. You enjoy the benefits of doing it. You miss out on so much stuff when you live in his presence. You know, there's three ways to get this enlightenment. Some people have to go through the school of hard knocks. 
the university of disappointment. They got to go through struggles. How many have gone through stuff and then 10, 12 years you look back on it and says, oh, that's the reason that I had to go through this. You don't get but three or four of them 10, 12 years in your life. You ain't got time to learn every lesson from your own experience. You got to get some of these lessons from other folks' experience. And then you get some folks that are gets into stuff and they get halfway in it and all of a sudden it says, like the prodigal, prodigal son did, he was about to eat pig slop. Then all of a sudden the Bible says he came to his senses. Wait a minute, I don't have to live like this. I'm going back home. But then there are some people that make a decision to live in God's presence. Yes. And when you live in God's presence, God sees the end from the beginning. You begin to see the end from the beginning. Anybody ever was almost about to get into an argument with a fool? And then all of a sudden, the, the spirit says to you, you know if you say that, they going to say that. And you know you, if they say that to you, you going to say that. And the spirit just said, just keep your mouth shut. You don't have to argue with nobody. And just say, thank you for sharing that insight with me. Appreciate your point of view. And they sitting there waiting for you to argue. You ain't going to argue with me? No. The Bible says, agree with your adversary quickly. You're right about that. You said 51, I thought it was 49. Here's 52. <laughs> Is that okay? We good? We good? All right, I'm out. <laughs> And it's such a beauty because God gives you that revelation when you live yes. in his presence. The Bible tells you that he will guide you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And sometime you can be on a mountaintop and as the, our shepherd he will take us to the valley. Because there's some lessons you learn in the valley that you can't get on the mountaintop. You see, sometimes we want to stay on the mountaintop. And God is already knowing that there's something about to change on the mountaintop. I got to get you to the valley. My job is to protect you. My job is to provide for you and to be a priest for you. And if we follow his direction, we will always be under his protection. Yes. And that's what he wants for us. So God is saying to you that all this week you decree and declare, I am total health. Yes. I am total health. And for us, y'all, that means health, spirit, soul, and body. For the world, they're thinking about their body. But we got to understand that just like God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is three parts. Somebody say, I'm a three-part being. You got a spirit. You got a soul and you got a body. And all three of them have to work together if you're going to have life more abundantly. At the home going celebration yesterday, we took flowers and all of a sudden, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. He's letting you know right now that the body that most folks spend all of their time on, that's the least important part. It's just a shell, it's just a housing. And people will spend thousands and thousands of dollars trying to change their body that's been created in God's own image, customized by God, created by God, designed by God. But they won't take a few moments to get to know God personally. And the best thing you can do, I'll tell you till I die, is to take a year of your life and really get to know God for yourself. Those of us who did it, all say, I just wish I would have did it earlier. Because every day with Jesus gets sweeter than the day before. And he wants all of us to live our life in his presence. He tells us in our purpose, true purpose in life. Somebody say, praise God, I was planned for God's pleasure. He's in the blessing business. His word says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth 
earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are right for him. Yes. But you can't try to be a person that used God like a sugar daddy. We got a lot of folks that don't go to God until it's something they want. You can tell by their prayers. They don't start with our Father who art in heaven. They start with, give me this day. I daily bread. Everything about what I want. What I want. And God is saying, you need to bless me for what I've already done. Before you start begging. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Not give me, give me, give me. Yeah. When we was kids, when people were like that, we said, give me, got his neck broke. Right. Messing with the kinfolk. Yeah. You're going to have to come stronger than that. <laughs> so he wants you to understand that he came that you would have total health, spirit, soul, and body. And this is how this relates to what we're going through right now. God is in the business of renewing everybody's mind in this church. Your part is to speak the I am statements on a daily basis. Praise God. I promise you, if you do this, you'll be the better for it. Because there are five factors that will determine your health in life. Who I am is what I think. You've been taught over and over again what you think about, you bring about. As a man thinks, as a woman thinks in her heart, so is he. God says no more stinking thinking. Who has done a good job getting rid of your stinking thinking this week? Negative thoughts, get thee behind me. I ain't got time for negative thoughts. Air cancer cells that you put in your body and nobody in their right man will put something in their body that's going to make them sick. We know ulcers are not caused by what you eat, but what's eating eat in you? Why would I focus on something that's going to eat me up? Unforgiveness. It's like drinking poison and hoping the person that hurts you gets sick. Why would I do that? When I know that when God tells me to forgive, it's for my benefit. And not so much for the person that hurts me benefit. I don't care what God say. I'm going to hold on to mine. Yeah, you do you. You do you. And you see people. I mean, have you ever seen somebody that's 20 looking 30? 30 year old. They're asking you, do you qualify for a senior citizen discount? <laughs> that's what negative thing going to do for you. And then I can reverse that. Have you ever seen somebody that's a senior sister, senior citizen that's still looking young? Yeah. Hey, praise God. Yeah. And they gonna check your ID. You go somewhere, you gotta give me, you gotta show me your ID. I can't believe you and your fitness. I can't believe you and your 60s. You got to show me some. That's what living in God's presence would do for you. But your point, who I am, is what I think. And then who I am is what I say. Don't you ever say anything about yourself or anybody else that you don't want to be true. Does not the word say death and life is in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat the fruit of it. Ain't no way you're going to plant a watermelon and get corn. Amen? <laughs> That's just the way the seeds of thought are. You, uh, I want corn. If you want corn, what do you do? You plant corn seeds. And if you know anything about God and the way he multiplies, God can take one little kernel of corn, put it into the ground. How many of you have ever seen a stalk of corn? And is it just one little ear of corn on that stalk? No, it can be five, sometimes six ears of corn. And on each one of them, got a thousand little coins on it. That's why we call it corn on the car. Not kernel on the car. Because there's a bunch of little coins on that car. But did Jesus die for corn? No. Did he give his life for corn? No. Jesus came that you and I would have life. And have it more abundantly. So you control what you say. You control what you think. And then you control what you do. 
The Bible says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man or woman soweth, so also shall they reap it. And that means you got to do what Jesus told us to do at the wedding in Cana. Mary gave us the, the secret to this whole thing. When they ran out of wine, she went to the servants. What did she say? Do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Who's made up your mind to do what he tells you to do? I don't care what the world says. If he tells me to duck, what am I going to do? Duck. If he tells me to shut up, shut up. If he tells me to speak, speak. And sometimes you got to speak the word in season and out of season when people want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. Sometimes if people will see you coming, I know what you're going to say. I'm going to say it anyhow. I'm going to speak it if you want to hear it and if you don't want to hear it. Because it's like a fire shut up in my bone. Yes, right. And I got to do what God told me to do. Yes. And after we do those first three, who I am, is what I eat. Yes. How many of us have made a decision to try to have eight glasses of water on a daily basis? You've got to increase your water intake. And the closer you can get to alkaline water, the better you can be. And don't be mad at me because I get me some alkaline water. You spending a dollar on water? Yeah, you spending a dollar on a scratch off. <laughs> if I want to spend a dollar on my water, don't hate the player. Hate your game. I'm spending mine on something I know going to pay off. And you saying... Winning the lottery is like getting struck by lightning twice. <laughs> I like my odds with this water right here. I know that this is going to help me out. And all I'm trying to say to you today, if God wants you to win, it don't take but one ticket. And I'm off for that. Who I am is what you do. How many of us have had to change some of them old ways? I, I was talking to some people that told me that they used to guide their life by the horoscope. But to God, horoscopes is right there with witchcraft. We don't let nothing control our life but God. I made up my mind today was going to be a good day. I don't need nobody telling me today's a nine day, today's an eight day. No, if I'm alive, if I'm above the dirt and not under the dirt, if I'm clothed in my right mind, if I got a fair portion of health and strength, if I got a roof over my head, yeah. <laughs> it's a nine day already. And I don't need nobody else trying to interfere with my nine day. But we control what we do, y'all. We got to do the right things. And when God gives us an instruction... Like he's telling somebody here today, praise God, that, that, that when it comes to what we eat, there are three things that we got to be very, very careful for in today's time. Number one, somebody say sugar. sugar. Okay. They're putting sugar in everything that they make. Do you know that one Coca-Cola has 45 grams of sugar? And you can't afford to be saying, I don't like water. I want Coca-Cola. <laughs> Yeah, you keep eating, drinking Coca-Cola, and all of a sudden, you're going to have a weight problem. Yeah. Can't wait to eat. <laughs> a seafood diet, you see food, and you eat it. But let's control our sugar intake, y'all. The next thing, somebody say salt. Stop putting salt on your food before you taste it. And the more you can get to a point to where you don't need salt, the better it is. Who has gotten to a point, unless it's something really, really special, don't need no salt. Don't need no salt. There's got to be some, you know, uh, to me, a little salt on my watermelon tastes good. So I'll, I'll improvise sometime, but just a little. But, 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 you know, we all have our differences of how we like things. And then the other one, the white is the, the flour. Because if you're getting ready to pull the flour out, it's a good idea you're getting ready to fry some, amen? <laughs> and when we start frying stuff, it catches up with us. 
And God is challenging you today to decree and declare that I am total health, spirit, soul, and body. And our part this week is to govern who I am, is what I think. Think on the right things, guys. Think about what God wants you to think about. Who I am is what I say. Speak life. Yes. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yes. If you don't have nothing good to say, do what? Keep your, mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Who I am is what I do. Do what's right in God's sight. We had a, a Bible study lesson this week on Cain and Abel when they were both presented sacrifices to God. Uh, Cain did a, a, a bad sacrifice and Abel did a, a good sacrifice. And all of a sudden, that's when the first haters showed up in the Bible. He's seeing his brother get blessed. And the next thing you know, it led to murder after he didn't listen to God's advice. God said, don't you know if you do what's right, I'll bless you too? But instead of doing what's right, he did what was wrong in God's sight. So let's do the right things. Who I am is what I eat. And lastly, after we control what we eat, who I am is what I inherit. You got to understand something, y'all. Every inheritance that we've had can be broken. Somebody say generational curses. Generational curse. Some of us inherit some things in our, our family line. Father could have been an alcoholic. Grandfather could have been an alcoholic. Great-grandfather could have been an alcoholic. And I'm reminded of a story of two twins who, who, who grew up in a family like that. The father used to beat them all the time when he got drunk. And, and when these twins uh, uh, grew up, one of them went to the West Coast and one of them went to the East Coast. And a psychologist wanted to interview them. And when she interviewed them, one had a family. He beat his wife. He beat his kids. The other one had a beautiful family, a loving wife, loving children. But they both gave the same response when interviewed. With a father like mine, what else could you expect? Yes. Yes. Now think about that. One of them followed the same deadbeat path yeah. of his deadbeat dad. But the other one got on his father's path. Anybody know that God is your father? Yes. <laughs> and he changed that. With a daddy like that, I'm not supposed to be a drinker. He drank enough for all of us. And what I got to do is change my life so that my family can have a good life. The other one continued to make excuses. And God is saying it's no time for excuses. Our time is to live in God's presence in total health. Spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, in your family, in your career, in your relationship. Somebody say nothing missing, nothing missing. and nothing broken. And nothing broken. If you can receive it, give God praise. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word. Yes. From Joel that says, let the weak say, I am strong. Yes. Let the poor say, I'm rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Father, we thank you that we have total health in you. Yes. This week our assignment is to govern what we think, what we say, what we do, what we eat, and what we inherit. Yes. We receive it and we believe it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, give the Lord a praise offering.